Being a lawyer can be awesome, but it also can be really stressful. So how can we boost our resilience and maintain our health and happiness even while dealing with our client's toughest problems? Well, one way is to build our psychological capital. That's the focus of this video, which was created to contribute to Lawyer Wellbeing Week. Let me introduce you to my friend, Martha Knudsen. She practiced law for many years, first as a law firm partner, and then as a general counsel in an in-house legal department. And she's going to teach us about psychological capital and how it helped her through a bet the company case that really tested her own resilience. Before turning it over to Martha, let's put ourselves in her shoes. Imagine that you're a general counsel for a successful property management company. A lawsuit was filed against your company alleging some unsafe conditions on one of your properties. And the trial was not going particularly well. But it's December 23rd and you're looking forward to celebrating the holidays with your family. Then you get a call from your trial counsel with some very bad news. The jury verdict is in and it's against your client for nearly $30 million. Your client is freaking out and is looking to you for answers and to make it all better. The media is saying horrible things about your company. Calls are flooding in with questions and concerns. To make it worse, your insurance company is refusing to pay for anything. And the clock is ticking on your ability to file an appeal and also to block plaintiff's ability to enforce the judgment. If you fail, your client will be forced to file for bankruptcy. The pressure is on. All eyes are on you. So how do you feel? What do you do? And what strengths do you rely on to help you meet this challenge? Well, I can tell you how I felt and what I did because this actually happened to me. So when this first went down, instead of spending the relaxing holidays with my family, I was in the office working, feeling very afraid, overwhelmed, and seriously questioning whether I had what it took to make this right for my client. So while I'm freaking out inside, I have to project calm and confidence to the company. At this point, I could have quit. And I secretly fantasized about just walking away, getting a job as a, a Starbucks barista or something like that. But instead, I chose to get up and work the problem step by step. To do this, I certainly relied on my legal skills and my years of experience. But as I worked the problem and I went through this over the next three years, it was my mental strength and my flexibility, my psychological capital that really made the difference. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Psychological capital, or PSYCAP as we call it, is a powerful combination of our mental strengths that impact the attitudes, the behaviors that help us to perform at a higher level. Our PSYCAP makes us better at what we do. So PSYCAP is made up of a combination of four mental strengths. You can remember them with the acronym of HERO. So H is for hope. Hope is about positive motivation and targeted goal setting skills and the flexibility to change directions um, when the demands change. E is self-efficacy, which is our belief in our own abilities and the confidence to use them to address challenge and stick with it until we succeed. R is for resilience, and resilience is about coping and bouncing back when adversity hits and handling the challenge and coming out stronger for it. O is for optimism, and optimism is being able to accurately assess the risk while also having a positive expectancy and a belief that you have what it takes to meet the challenge and prevail. 
So this has been studied in a lot of different business contexts. And what's been found is that people with higher levels of PSYCAP have a competitive edge. They perform better. They have higher levels of motivation. Um, they like their jobs better. And they do better at handling the stress of a situation. And over time, they show elevated levels of well-being. So challenge is what we as lawyers do. SciCap can help us do it better. So I'm gonna tell you about how I developed and used my SciCap to meet my $30 million challenge. First, self-efficacy. Now remember, we're talking about our beliefs here, our beliefs and our abilities. And this is important because when challenge hits, quickly and usually without thinking about it, we do an assessment of the demands of the situation and whether we have what it takes to handle it. If deep down we don't believe that we are up to the challenge, our stress levels are gonna go up and it's gonna be a lot harder for us to put in the effort and the time and the focus to meet that challenge and see it through to the end. Mm. If instead our confidence levels are high, we are gonna be much more likely to put in the time and effort necessary to hit that challenge head on and stick it through until we succeed. So this is what I did. So when this first went down, uh, I remember thinking like, oh, this is horrible. I don't think I can do this. I think, you know, we probably should get somebody like better than me to, to uh, to see this through. Um, I think this is pretty normal to have this kind of a reaction in a situation like this, but if I would have stayed there, it would have been really hard for me to continue to come to work every day and work this problem over the years that it took. Um, so what I did in order to address that is I thought about my past successes, my past wins, and I identified the skills and strengths that I used in those situations to see me through and how I could use those same skills and strengths to help me out in this situation. So I thought, okay, I've tried cases and I've won. I've appealed cases and I've won. I have uh, got my clients out of some pretty tricky situations. Okay, so I have done all these things and I've been successful doing them. All right, so this situation is a little more challenging than some of those in the past, but the skills and strengths that I use there, that's exactly what I'm going to need here. And doing that helped me feel more confident that I had what it took. And it took away some of that nagging worry that I didn't know what I was doing, so I could instead take that energy and use it to focus on what was in front of me. Next, I sought out feedback from trusted colleagues. I sat down with them and I talked through what I thought about the risk, um, my strategies for going forward. And while this, this was certainly a little vulnerable, I also asked them about whether I was the right person to carry this forward. Doing this was invaluable. Um, it helped me feel confident in my approach and in myself and again, with that confidence, it was easier to, to meet every new challenge that came along. I also made sure to celebrate every small win that happened. And as I did that, I deliberately thought about and owned my own part of making that happen. So doing this made me feel good, which was great. And again, it also reinforced my confidence in my abilities and that I could handle um, what was happening. And I did this for my team. I made sure that they knew what they had done to make our successes happen. So over the course of this case, I had to go through these self-efficacy exercises a lot. Um, I did it over and over again. Um, and it helped for me to sometimes write this stuff down. Um, for you, you can build your self-efficacy by doing some of these same things. Slow down and take a look at the situation again. Think about your past successes. 
identify what your strengths and skills were that helped you get through those and visualize how you can use those same things to address the challenge that's in front of you. And as a leader, do this for the people that you work with. Um, give them feedback. You go get feedback on your own and celebrate each and every small win that happens and think about what you did and what they did to make that happen. As you do this over time, your self-efficacy will increase. Next, I worked on my resilience. The practice of law is full of challenge and obstacles. It's part of what we do. And resilience isn't about just sucking it up and dealing with it. Instead, resilience is about accurately assessing the risk while also being aware of the assets and resources that we have on our side to help us cope with the challenge and the stress in healthy ways. So if you remember, when challenge first hits, we do this initial assessment where we think about the demands of the situation and what we have on our side that can help us meet those challenges. And if we think the demand is much higher than the assets we have to handle it, our stress levels are gonna more likely to go through the roof and we're gonna have a harder time feeling like we can handle it. So with resilience, the first thing that I did is to take a step back after the dust settled and to reassess um, my initial assessment of the risk. Um, and as I thought about it, yeah, I found I was pretty spot on. This was bad. You know, I mean, it had the potential to be a company killer. But slowing down also helped me to see that I had a lot of runway before that was going to happen. And I was able to identify some options that I could pursue um, because I had some time to do it. Slowing down in this way and looking at the risk again also helped me to identify the things that I could and could not control about the situation. I could not have controlled that jury or the judge. I could not have controlled plaintiff's counsel and I certainly could not control the insurance company. Just identifying those things help take away some of that nagging worry that I was carrying around of like, oh, I should have been able to, to um, handle that somehow. I should have been able to make it so those things didn't happen. Um, instead, that went down quite a bit and I could take that mental energy um, that I was using ruminating and shift it over to focus on the things that I could control. The next thing that I did to build my resilience was to consciously and deliberately identify the assets and resources that I had on my side that could help. So for me, I deliberately thought about my legal skills and my legal experience. Okay, I've got those on my side and that's part of what I looked at with my self-efficacy. Um, I also thought about the fact that like, okay, I have a high work ethic. I've got really good judgment, I have high social intelligence, and I have a sense of humor, which really helped a lot during, during this time period. I also had an internal team that was hardworking, diligent, and intelligent, and that I could rely on. And I had my personal relationships. I had the love of my family, I had great friends, and this really helped me to be able to unplug from this situation, recover, and still engage in the rest of my life, which had a huge impact on my ability to keep going um, and my well-being levels. And I had the conviction that what I was doing mattered. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Believing in what I was doing caring about the company and the people that worked for it and working to make sure that their livelihoods stayed in place was a huge motivator for me. Um, it gave me purpose and helped me keep going when things got tough. This is something that I deliberately talked about a lot with my team, both my outside counsel and my inside um, 
team to help us keep our eye on the ball and to know that what we were doing was important. For you, the lesson with resilience is to slow down and revisit your initial assessment of the risk. Think critically about what your risk is. Assess it in terms of what you can and can't control and think about the resources that you have on your side and how you can build them. You can do this for yourself and you can also do this for the people on your team. So next up um, is hope. And hope sounds fluffy, but it is really handy for lawyering because it's all about positive motivation and building targeted goal setting and goal planning skills for meeting obstacles and changing direction um, when something new comes up. So for me, I had one big goal, to win. Um, I wanted to get rid of that verdict and make the insurance company pay. But I could not eat that elephant all at once. So it helped to break it down into small, uh, more manageable, but still challenging goals that I believed that I could tackle. So for example, the first thing I needed to do was um, get a stay of execution. So I sat down with my team and we brainstormed different ways to make that happen. We also thought through possible obstacles um, to making those happen. And we strategize ways around them. Now thinking through this goal in this way gave me a lot of confidence because like, I had a plan. Um, so when an obstacle inevitably popped up, I didn't freak out because I knew it was going to happen and I knew what I was going to do to get around it. This is something that you can do for your challenges. Um, if it's just a smaller challenge, if you're a new lawyer and you're facing something for the first time, you might be able to do goal planning like this um, just for that goal. Figure out what your goal is, um, identify multiple pathways to achieve that goal, think about the obstacles and think through how you're gonna get around it. But if you have a bigger goal, break that goal up into smaller steps and go through that same process. Finally, optimism. When addressing challenge, it's really important to look at the situation as a glass half full. Now, this isn't just ignoring the hard things and just figuring it's somehow gonna all work out. It's more of a continuous process of assessing the risk in an accurate way while also believing in and expecting that good things are gonna happen and that we can meet the challenge and prevail. So along the way with all of this, it really helped me to envision success. Now this might sound cheesy, but visualization is a powerful and proven cognitive tool. So I actually took time out to rehearse in my head how I was gonna handle each thing that happened. And I thought about how it would feel when success happened. As I've talked through these four PSYCAP mental strengths, these hero strengths of hope, self-efficacy, resilience, and optimism, you probably notice that they overlap and build on each other. And this is what researchers think builds that powerful synergy that helps us to attack challenges and crush our goals. This practical tool of PSYCAP helped me to be a better, more effective, happier, and healthier lawyer. And it can help you too. And the good news is that it can be developed. It takes a little bit of training and deliberate practice. You can develop it for yourself, and as leaders, you can develop it for the people that you work with. It helped me to create a worksheet to go through all these processes as I was attacking challenge. And if you think that this can be helpful to you too, it's available online. It's on page 55 of the Wellbeing Toolkit for Lawyers and Legal Employers available through the ABA. Take a look and if it works for you, let me know. If it doesn't work for you, let me know that too. The bottom line is pay attention to your PSYCAP. So how did my case turn out? Well, we came out on top.
The verdict went from almost $30 million to just under two, all paid for by the insurance company. And my client has grown and is thriving. As for me, this is one of my most proud things that I have done in my career. It was my psychological capital that helped me address the challenges of this case and come out better and stronger for the experience. Thank you.